renal tubular acidosis. The world is confused, it does not know renal tubular acidosis. The president of North Korea, when I mean, look at his face, big glasses. No wonder he was so bitter. He didn't understand renal tubular acidosis. In fact, during his funeral, they had everyone neatly lined up. You know how those communists have everything all lean, lined up, all neatly lined up for his funeral. Except there was one or two or three dispersed out of line, out of order individuals making fun of him. Ah, they didn't know renal tubular acidosis. Ah. They didn't like that, so they grabbed the, the picture and with Photoshop took away those three individuals. The Germans didn't like that. Said, hey, you took out the individuals who are making fun of you for not knowing RTA. So they said, apologize, and they said, okay, here, here's the picture, and here's the guy making fun of Kim Jong-il for not knowing renal tubular acidosis. President Obama is about ready to Skype me here in any moment with the question that every president has had in the past. Can a president rule a country not knowing renal tubular acidosis? Kim Jong, president of North Korea, just gave up and died. Well, and actually, it's not, it's no surprise that it, that renal tubular acidosis is so confusing. The name is so misleading. Renal tubular acidosis. There's nothing acidotic about the renal tubules and the renal tubular acidosis. There's nothing acidotic. Actually, the renal tubules are alkalotic. Renal tubular acidosis is, in, is the inability of the kidney to acidify a normally functioning kidney to acidify the urine below five. I think it's the, the limit. 5.5, 5.3. Inability to acidify the urine. There's two main reasons why this could happen. One, there's not enough wasting of protons. Protons make the the circular that makes the blood acidic, protons, acid. An acid releases protons. So an acid releases protons. Protons yeah, make the pH in a, in a circ circulating pH acidic in the blood. And so we want the kidney to get rid of the extra protons. For some reason, it's not doing it. The section, the part of the the segment of the renal tubules that is supposed to be excreting protons out in the toilet, it's not doing it. The second reason, it could be that the intercalated cells, which are the ones in the distal convoluted tubule, in charge, actually they have, there's two protons, there's, there's, I mean, two pumps, proton pumps. They're supposed to be enzymes in the membrane the luminal side, luminal side of the membrane that is supposed to secrete protons, and they're not doing it. The second reason is, well, that that process, that system may be working in fine, working fine, but the proximal convoluted tubule is not reabsorbing bicarbonate. Bicarbonate is our favorite buffer. And in, in the body and the proximal convoluted tube is not re returning it to the, to the circular, circulatory system it's like a bad government where you pay your taxes and you never see it back the roads are crappy it should be, should be building ro roads with and schools with your taxes building dams or destroying them like in Oregon but they're not. You don't see the money. It's like a corrupt government. That's how the kidney is. A corrupt kidney. It's not returning the bicarbonate. You're giving them all this bicarbonate. They're supposed to return it. To make good use to it. Of your taxes of bicarbonate. And it's not. It's wasted. Money wasted. Bicarbonate wasted. Down to the toilet. Money down to the toilet. Taxes. Bicarbonate. Government. Kidney. 
to the toilet. And so then, so there's, for that reason, two types, two main types, there's more, but there's two main types. One is called distal renal tubular acidosis, where the distal tubule is not uh, secreting the extra bicarbonate. There's two types of pumps in the in the distal renal convolute and the distal convoluted tubule of the kidney. The two pumps that are two enzyme ATPases that are secreting protons, supposed to be wasting the protons, secreting them out to the tubule. Two main ones. Uh, one of them is a proton ATPase. It just uses ATP and kicks the proton out to the lumen, to the P side, the P side of the cell. And the other one is an exchange ATPase. It exchanges, it excretes, secretes out to the lumen hydrogen protons in exchange for potassium, in exchange for potassium. So it saves potassium in exchange for the, the proton. That's distal renal tubular acidosis. That, those protons, for some reason, are not working. Then there's proximal renal tubular acidosis. Bicarbonate is not wasted out. It's wasted out. It's not reabsorbed back to the circulatory system. There's a third type, and the third type is a combination of both, a combination of distal and proximal uh, renal tubular acidosis. There's a fourth type, and there's more. There's one person in Italy, one person in Mayo Clinic, and another one in Brazil studying these. These are extremely rare. Type number four is fairly rare as well, but it has nothing to do with the kidney and still it's and it's still called renal tubular acidosis it's actually a hypoaldosteronism state a state of hypoaldosteronism and in under these conditions hypoaldosteronism uh, under these conditions, like Addison's disease, for example, that's a primary hypoaldosteronism, there's secondary hypoaldosteronism as well. What, uh, what's happening, besides the main pathology, is that the proximal tubule is not dumping out ammonia. It's not secreting out ammonia. And so there's an excess ammonia circulating in the system because it's not, it's not wasted out to the to the toilet, which like it's supposed to, like the kidney is supposed to do. And so there, and so then there's a hyperammonemia, an inability of the kidney to acidify the urine, and it's norm functionally normally function has a normal function. It's in this case, not type number four has nothing to do with the kidneys with hyperaldosteronism. It also co courses with, goes uh, with. Um, uh, hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia. Type four. Ammonia. Hyperammonemia. Because the kidney is not throwing it out. It's not throwing out the ammonia. The hypoaldosteronism prevents the secretion of ammonia. They should rename this. I mean, it's, and I told the guy, I know the guy that wrote the paper. We went to school together in 1830s, 1840s. Hmm. I told him, make sure you write the name. He did, like all scientists. Finally, the conclusion leads me to believe that this is a case of renal tubular. And he fell asleep. Woke up. Oh, acidosis. I told him, make sure that you write the name completely. Renal tubular problems causing acidosis. 
and therefore I call this renal tubular acidosis. So we're stuck with a name that doesn't work for any of the cases. Not one, not type one, not type two, not type three, not type four. Type four, it's not even renal tubular. That's what renal tubular acidosis is, an inability to concentrate the urine. One, because the kidneys are not reabsorbing bicarbonate at the proximal convoluted tubule. Second, because the kidney at the distal convoluted tubules are, is not uh, secreting the excess hydrogen. That's um, the distal convoluted tubule. That's type one. Type two is the proximal where it's not losing. It's not re it's losing bicarbonate. It's not reabsorbing bicarbonate. Type 3 is a combination of both. Type 4 doesn't even have to do with the kidneys. It's a state of hypoaldosteronism, hypoaldosteronism with hyperkalemia and hyperammonemia. The cause, the kidney is not secreting out ammonia. It's reabsorbing too much ammonia. And so 